has the ability that you know that you can implement some strategies that you can 10x, 2x, 3, you know, whatever your criteria is on that business. But I would say the main thing is cash flow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is the true special episode that I keep saying. Every every episode I say it's going to be a great episode, but, but this one is a true special one because I got my guy Van Taylor in here today. My we, We're supposed to be hosting other podcast episodes together, so now we are reunited and we're going to take it to the next level. So welcome everybody to another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed with your guy Bees where we expose everything related to entrepreneurship with a twist of business acquisitions. Let's go, let's go. Van, what is good, my brother? Welcome to the show. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I can't complain, bro. It's, it's been That's amazing, what's... been an amazing year, man. We, you know, it's been an amazing journey. That's what's up, yo. I, I know how that go, man. I know you're doing big things as always, bro. Uh, yeah. Happy to have you on here. It's a long overdue conversation. Uh, it's just back, like it's just like our back in the day stuff. We be doing it all the time, anyway. But um, tell the people a little bit more about yourself. Introduce yourself. Explain who you are, what you do, and then we get yeah. into it. Absolutely. So, Van Taylor, they call me Mister Go All In. Um, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, you know, all the different social media platforms. The Van Taylor One on Instagram, official Van Taylor on Facebook and TikTok. Um, I focus on showing entrepreneurs how to build and scale their sales teams. Um, I've been in sales for a long time. I've been in sales since 2006. Really, I've been in sales since I came out my mother's womb, but uh, <laughs> officially, right, uh, when I got my first corporate um, gig in 2006 uh, in the fitness industry, I did high ticket sales for, you know, better of a decade, you know, 10 plus years yeah. and uh, learned, you know, the skill set of high ticket sales. So we would go travel around the country, open it up, you know, your big health clubs in your cities, you know, like your LA Fitness, your EO Sports, um, your 24-hour fitness type of a deal, you know, big, big health clubs. And we would be responsible for setting up the actual personal training department within the, you know, the gym, right? Mm -hmm. So those packages, as you guys know, if you've been in a gym, you know, you a, a personal trainer is anywhere from, you know, $100 an hour to $150 an hour. Yeah. You know, you times out by you train with a trainer three times a week, you times out by a monthly, you times out by for the year. You're talking about five thousand to ten thousand dollar personal training packages um, mm -hmm. that we, that, we, you know, we sold. So for me personally, how I got into high ticket sales was in the fitness industry. I've personally sold probably about 30 million dollars in, in high ticket sales just from the fitness industry alone mm -hmm. and then transition into this online world. You know, you can add you know, another eight figures of, of actual, you know, business that we've done, you know, online. So we're talking about 40, $50 million in high ticket sales um, that I've been able to do. So I've always not really focused on high ticket sales, to be honest with you. Um, you know, sales in general has a negative uh, connotation, has a negative, like mm -hmm. no one, like, hey, I'm the sales guy. I'm the, I'm the, yeah. I'm the sales. Until recently, however, right? Now everybody is talking about their high ticket sales person, right? Oh, I do high ticket sales. I do high ticket sales. It's the cool thing to do now, right? Yeah, it's thing to be as a high ticket sales closer, but I actually did it before it was cool, right? So <laughs> um, nobody would like you would disguise your name of what you were outside of saying that you were a sales guy, right? But now high yeah. ticket sales is very, very popular. So um, showing people really it goes back down to content in the, in this online space in this online world. Your your sales mm -hmm. process actually starts from from how you represent yourself online, how you represent yourself yeah. your content, how you represent yourself from your PR, how you represent yourself from you know, people that have worked with you. So, you know, your name. And, and that's what I originally more knew you for is yeah. the branding side. Yeah. And, it, but, but you always, there was always that a, a clear line, a distinction between branding and yeah. say some of it merged, yeah. but you had to really understand that there was different groups right there. Right. And yeah. I learned that from you too. And yeah. if I'm right, tell the people, but at the time, I was like, yo, you should focus more on the sales side because everybody knew you for the branding side too, yeah. which is important. It's a, that stepping stone, but yeah. putting together a sales team, having a dedicated sales force and, you know, executing on that, that's critical in business, wouldn't you say? 
Hey guys, okay, before we get to the episode, I just had to take a moment to say thank you to everybody that's been supporting Entrepreneurship Exposed. Your guy B's here and, you know, just having a great time having these conversations, showing you every aspect of entrepreneurship because there's a lot of things out there that are, you know, seems like all the glitz and the glam, everything looks good, but we want to make sure that you see some of the obstacles, not things that will stop you, but just things that you need to know before you dive into this world of entrepreneurship. If you like this content, you like these videos, please just do me a favor and just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you click the like button, comment on it. Just tell me what you feel about each topic so I'll know how to adjust for other topics and have other guests on. And make sure that you hit the notification bell because YouTube's kind of weird like that and if you don't have that notification bell, even if you're subscribed to me, you won't see a lot of my content, all right? So if you would like to support us, that would be the best way. Thank you so much. Now back to the episode. That's critical in business, wouldn't you say? It's the most crucial thing in business, right? It's the bottleneck for most businesses. It's the issue in most businesses to prevent people from scaling is the sales, like not, and it's not only just generating sales, but it's, you know, I know for you, you know, you're big on processes and systems. Uh, what's your sales process? What does your system look like? Right. Mm. And then most people, you know, I'll just take the online entrepreneur space, right. Um, they're experts at what they do. They're, they're very skilled at what they do, but they're not skilled at sales. They're not skilled at selling. Yep. They're not skilled at managing sales teams. They're not skilled at what it takes to have a successful uh, sales team, you know, within your business. Right. And a lot of times these, you know, um, the entrepreneurs that I deal with, they're already successful. They're already making six figures, some of them seven figures, some of them even eight figures uh, recently that I, I've been talking to. They're just so good at marketing. They're so good at being the attractive character in their business. They're so mm -hmm. good at speaking from stage. They're so good at doing events. They're so good at doing challenges that their their inability to like run a proper sales team is overlooked because of how successful they are. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, Bro, honestly, you don't realize how how much what you're saying is resonating too, because we got some friends that I, that I've been speaking to mm -hmm. who they've gone through that this year. Right. Yeah. They're doing great. Numbers were great because, you know, they're the face of the business and yeah. they're marketing and they're on IG and, you know, yeah. they're an influencer. Yeah. So they had a huge tribe and everything, but they had no sales team. And then when, it, it, you know, when people always say, oh, you got to get a funnel. Yeah, that's cool. You get a funnel, but how you get traffic into that funnel? Yeah. If you don't have a steady way of getting the traffic into the funnel, and usually the sales team helps you to do that. Yeah. Right. To, to get to, to close those deals after you get traffic into the funnel and everything like that, it, you know, that, that can affect you in the long run. And, and I've seen it happen specifically with close friends of ours where yeah. they were doing amazing, but then yeah. they realized that sales wasn't continuing to come in. Consistently. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll go back to the story of like who I am and what I do. Right. So mm -hmm. um, branding, that's what, what I really wanted to focus on because People don't know how to tell their story. People don't know how to like accept like, hey, you you if you're building a personal brand, like your voice and your story needs to be out there on social media. You you need to put that out there. You need to have content, right? Mm -hmm. However, right, that's one portion of the sales process. That's where mm -hmm. your sales start with content. I have a triple C method: content to conversation to cash or to customer conversion. You have to have content to right. spark up conversations. Those conversations lead into to cash. However, that mm. component requires someone to sell the program. And mm. if you're scaling your business, you can't be the one selling your program all the time. Like if I'm, mm. I, I want to get involved with your program. If, if, if I have to talk to you, then that means that the, somewhere, something else in your business is not being um, focused on, right? Yep. Especially if you're doing seven, eight sales calls a day, let's say a sales call takes 30 minutes to an hour and you got eight sales calls a day. That's eight hours a day that you got on your calendar blocked off. When are you doing your content? When are you, you know, looking at uh, building, you know, your your coaches and 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 scaling, you know, from a, a content and visibility standpoint? When are you yeah. focusing on improving your funnels? When are you focusing on, you know, getting new information so you can keep increasing your ability and your knowledge to to teach new things? So that sales is really the bottleneck and an issue in most businesses, even for people that are winning at a high right. level. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And that content, content, conversations, customers, right? Yeah. That's 100%. I, I mean, I might have heard you say it before, but yeah. I'm just speaking from on behalf of that. I, I live that. That's exactly true what Van is explaining because 
you know, I put out content. I'm talking about how you can acquire businesses. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, wait a minute. How do you do that? What did you mean about this? They wouldn't ask that question if the content wasn't out. No. And then that typically then leads to, oh, all right, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I want to get in on this. And then, bam, they become a customer. So I, I've lived it. And Van is telling 100% the truth on that. But, yeah. but, but Van, yeah. we got to shift our mindset, though, right? Yeah. Now, you already know what I do with the acquisitions. You acquire, you're in the middle of acquisitions right now, too. You're, you're, yeah. you're getting into that fully. Yes. The mindset that we have as investors when we're acquiring a business yeah. is that it's better to not be the face of your business. Yeah. I don't want to be the, I mean, I have to be the face of the business of me uh, teaching people to acquire a business because I'm the one teaching them to do that. Right. Yeah. But now, all the companies I acquire, I don't want to be the face of them. I want to yeah. sit in the background, have someone else be the face of them, and I'm collecting revenue. Mm -hmm. What would you what do you say to towards that? Do you still feel that no matter what, even if you're acquiring multiple companies, you still need to be the face? Because uh what's his name? Warren Buffett is not really quote unquote the face of Berkshire Hathaway and all of the um uh, companies it acquires, but he kind of is because everybody knows that Berkshire Hathaway is his and they're acquiring companies. So what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so so my thoughts on that have shifted and changed based off of you know what I've learned over the last, I would say, six months to seven months um, as far as acquiring wealth and building businesses and, and now purchasing and acquiring businesses. Mm -hmm. So if you want a personal brand, something you're passionate about, something that you, 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 know, you really want to be able to deliver that message from your own story, then yes, I would say you have to be the face of the brand. Mm -hmm. However, if you're purchasing, if you are acquiring businesses, then that's the opposite of what you want, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to have to be the face because that requires a whole bunch of more work that you got to do. Yes. You now consistently be the face of that company, meaning new mm -hmm. content. Like you're you're consistently now talking to a different avatar, especially if you're getting multiple different businesses. Most of the time, they're not going to be in the same niche. Exactly. Right? So I'll give an example. Um, Russell Brunson, he's taking on, he, he's, he's purchasing um, and acquiring a lot of different businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not the fake. He's not the attractive. We, it's really called the attractive character. If we want to really break it down to the marketing term, yeah. he's not trying to be the attractive character in his business, in all of those businesses. So what happens is you, you look at a business that you want to acquire. Let's say it is a brand. Let's say it is something that has to have content that has to like attract people through social media and through marketing. Yeah. You want to be able to now have a vision of how can I place an attractive character into this business, how can I attract the right face that can now promote yep. And, yep. and build from the content perspective of this business? Mm -hmm. so, so now when I look at other businesses um, from behind the scenes, what we're doing is we, we, we take people that are already the attractive character in their business, and mm -hmm. then we put the, the, the machine behind them, right? We, mm -hmm. we give them the sales processes, the systems, you know, the funnels, you know, the marketing, you know, the outreach, you know, all the foundational systems that you need to be to have a successful business because, mm -hmm. you know, myself, my business partners have have learned how to build, you know, successful personal brands. So now we just take someone that is the attractive character and then just put the engine behind them. Or if you're trying to acquire a business, then, you know, now going in, hey, I know that if I'm buying this business and there was an attractive character here, I know I'm going to have to replace this attractive character at, at some point in time based off of how you negotiate that deal and how you acquire that, that business. Mm, I love it. I love it. So now tell me this though. Now, now that you're making that shift mm -hmm. into acquisitions as well, yeah. how do you feel like, what's the, the, the main uh, uh, benefit of acquiring a business versus uh, building it from scratch? Uh, the main benefit, it, it, it's already has a proven cash flow. It already has success. And, and if you look at the, the criteria of what you're looking to purchase, and I'm getting this information, you know, directly from, from really from, from you, you know, you're looking at someone that's past that five-year mark. Yep. You're looking at someone that has a, you know, a cash flow positive business, you know, over a hundred thousand plus a month that they're mm -hmm. cash flowing. Right. And that someone that it, a, a business that now. Hey, damn, I got to shut it down or what I'm going to do. Turns out mm -hmm. bees and van and others are going to swoop in and claim the business for them from them. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing. These baby boomers whose businesses that we're looking at, 
that we love and it's like, oh, wow, these numbers look great. Usually, they ain't doing no type of marketing. They don't even know what a funnel is. Usually, they ain't running no ads. Usually, they're not even on social media. But yet, they still seven figures in revenue and, and almost seven figures in uh, uh, profit. Mm -hmm. When you swoop into something like that, how excited do you get at the small little things that you know and you probably even take for granted because you just think it's, it just should be in any business? Mm -hmm. How excited does that make you in order to then scale it significantly quickly because, uh, you know, you put those couple of things into place, like those low hanging fruit that you um, address. Yeah, it's, 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 it makes it opportunities. You know, when, when certain people are looking at a business, they don't see these things, right? They don't see. So it gives you the edge. Really. It, I feel like I have an edge because I can come in and the first thing I'm looking at is, okay, what's their sales process? <laughs> first mm -hmm. of all, right. What does their sales team look like? And then from there, I'm looking at the marketing. What does the marketing look like? Are they are they running Instagram ads? Are they running Facebook ads? Are they running YouTube ads? Are they running TikTok ads? Right? Mm -hmm. Are they do they have a designated sales team? Do they have a sales manager? Right? And those two components right there is is already you know you're looking at a three four x minimum mm -hmm. when you take those things that aren't in place or are working at a level that is mediocre. Mm -hmm. How you can, how for sure, well, at least from my knowledge, how I can take that and put gasoline on it. So there we go. There we go. That, that's opportunity galore. And knowing those, and, and you don't have to know how to do that yourself. You can always oh. bring in someone like Van's team to come and do that after you acquire a business, right? I'm not, I'm not an expert in Facebook ads. I'm not an expert exactly. at Instagram ads. I'm not an expert. I'm not an ads. Like I don't run ads, but I know that I can put an expert in place in exactly. that role. And what the, I know what the, the successful result is though, that I'm looking at that. I know that I can accomplish by putting the pr proper expert in place. Right. Mm, so we go. from a sales perspective, I know what a sales process looks like. I know yeah. what a successful sales team looks like. I know if you show me a, a, a sales team that doesn't know their stats real time, I guarantee you that sales team is not successful. I guarantee you your sales team is not generating the, the numbers you want. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. even go a step further and I'm talking to, um, people out here that are selling a product and service that requires people to, you know, go to a landing page that requires mm -hmm. people to maybe even get on a phone call with a sales rep. Yeah. If you, if you tell me right now, your sales team is not doing outbound sales, meaning they're not calling leads. They're not calling people that have opted in with the name, phone number, and email to mm -hmm. an email list, to an ebook, to a low ticket product, or to people that have booked a sales call that haven't showed up and you are not following up with those leads. Mm -hmm. I promise you you're leaving you know hundreds and thousands probably millions of dollars on the table annually yeah. wow there we go now you mentioned uh i think the word you used was data i don't remember specifically but yeah. let's talk about metrics then yeah what type of metrics are you looking for in a sales team like uh, success metrics that they're making x amount of calls yeah. um per day or that they're following up in a certain period of time is there any type of kpis key performance indicators that you focus yeah. on so I'll, I'll, I'll look at one. Let's say you are running um, someone that's running traffic, someone that's running uh, ads and someone opts into your funnel, someone opts into your um, low ticket uh, funnel and they actually make a purchase. Let's say mm -hmm. they bought a $7 item or a $29 item or even a $97 item. Mm -hmm. If you don't call that lead, they've already purchased. So most times they're happy. Oh, I got an auto purchase. Mm -hmm. But most people that have a low ticket item have a higher ticket item. So I'll give mm -hmm. you a KPI. If you don't have a trigger to a salesperson when someone purchases a low ticket item and they're not calling that person within five minutes, the chances of them going to an additional upgrade drop by 300 plus percent. Wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's five minutes. So if I just bought, bought your ebook, right, I'm online, I'm searching and I see your ad and I'm like, oh, cool. I want to learn how to do X, Y, Z. Let me, let me buy this. Yeah. And then I don't get a call within five minutes. The chances of me having a successful like upgrade to a higher product, because at the end of the day, they bought that product because they have a problem that they feel like you can solve. Exactly. But all they saw was the $97 offer. They didn't even see the, the, the other offers that you got. So if a salesperson calls them with, within five minutes of them purchasing that, and then they go into fact finding of what their problem is and what they're really looking for, that probably could lead to your 5K, 10K, 15K, 20K offer because you really now were able to break down what they what their need was. And then you obviously wow. can solve that problem. 
Let's say I call them in a week. They never even opened the ebook. They bought it because it was just like on a high and they just like, oh, let me get this. But then they never executed on it. And you call them a week later or you don't call them at all. There, there's no result there. That's one. The next thing is output. Let's say you have a sales team of five people and you have a list of, I'll just lowball it. You got 10,000 names, phone numbers, and emails. Yeah. If that person, if that, if that sales rep is not making at least a minimum of a hundred calls a day, that KPI is going to transition into the lack of new business. Because if mm -hmm. our, I'll just give you our metrics that we have for our sales teams and the people that we, that we run. If you make a hundred calls a day, that means that you should be able to connect to a minimum of 20 people, mm -hmm. right? If you talk to 20 people, you should be able to set 10 of them up on an appointment with your sales rep that's going to do a high ticket sale. Mm. When you set 10 of them, at least five of them should show up. Five mm. will show up to the appointment, 50% show ratio. Mm. Out of those five people, if you have a decent closer, you should be able to convert at least two of those people. Out of those five, you should be able to convert two of those people into your high ticket offer. Mm. Let's say your high ticket offer is 10,000. That's 20K from those mm -hmm. two leads. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's say we can do that every. I'm a lowball it. Let's see, say every three days we can complete that cycle of yeah. 100, 20, 10, 5, 2. Yeah. That's 20K. That's 40K a week mm. per sales rep. Per you sales five, rep. You got five sales reps that are yeah. completing this process. 40 mm. times five, that's 200K. Yes, sir. A week. A week, a week. That's eight hundred k a month. You, you, you know what you're getting into. Also, is um, uh, I always go back to the cash flow quadrant mm -hmm. in in uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, right? And you know how a lot of people we start in employees and then we go down to self employed. Mm -hmm. And the reason why so many people don't make it from self employed to business owner is because they're like, nah, I want to do it all myself. Nobody could do it as good as me. And I'm like, no, I'd rather you know, 10 people doing it 75% as good as me, then me have to do it 100% all by myself, Yeah. right? So that scalability is exactly what you're describing. And if you look at those numbers like that, it makes sense. It justifies having uh, those resources to continue to help drive your sales. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it. those are some of the KPIs. So, and that's just outbound. That has nothing to do with their marketing, their amazing content that they're generating their own leads. I just gave you a whole outbound strategy of just a name, phone numbers, and emails on an email list Damn, from people go. that are opting in to things that you've had in the past, people that have opted into, you know, your funnels. That has nothing to do with inbound leads. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. I got to ask, though, and maybe it's time we go into pop now because I want to talk about a specific problem that just came into my mind. So it's time to pop. We're going to okay. talk about the pros, opportunities, and problems related to seven-figure sales, sales in general. Sales yeah. in general, right? Now, you mind if I go and start with the problem then? And we would go, go back to the pros. Let's start with the problem. Let's do it. So as we're talking about KPIs, I, I remember back from my consulting days in corporate America, and one of the problems when it comes to sales team and a, and a KPI that's related to how many sales you make per day, or I'm sorry, yeah. how many calls you make yeah. per day, is that that drives bad behavior, right? Now it's like, okay, there's... My, my bonus is going to be dependent on how many sales, me meeting that KPI regularly. Well, you know what? I'm just going to call real quick and you know I'm not going to give good customer service yeah. because I'm just focused on, I got to make that KPI of, of the mm -hmm. amount of calls I made today. Yep. How do you address something like that when it comes to sales? Oh man, easy. Cause it's, it's a uh, eat what you kill. I don't, I don't, I don't pay my sales reps off of how many phone calls they make. Mm. I pay them off the result of actually a deal getting closed. That's just yeah. the activity. That's just the, the, the activity action that generates the result. The mm -hmm. activity on the front end is you need to pick up the phone and make phone calls, mm -hmm. right? The result is going to be that the law of average, mm -hmm. right? And this gives me the ability to also, from the sales manager standpoint, the, the sales manager of the team can manage where he needs to focus on with his sales guy. So for example, we call it outflow. What's your outflow? What's your capacity for outflow is the ability to pick up the phone. Let's say you're calling 100 people a day and you're connecting to 30 people a day. 
but you're only setting five appointments from those 30 people that you talk to. Well, now yeah. we know it's a skill issue. It's not a will issue. It's a skill yeah. issue. It's a skill when people actually get on the phone. How are you communicating to them in a way to get them to want to actually move forward with getting on the phone to talk about the, their problem, to get it solved, to obviously give them the ability to, to for us to pitch our services to them? Mm, right. So we if go. you're not, uh, we call it a setter, uh, a yeah. appointment setter. So if I'm, because remember, you you might have opted into my my email list or my ebook four months ago. Mm. So if I'm calling you randomly from a number you don't know, and you actually pick up, there's a skill set in getting you to want to stay on the phone for four or five minutes to re talk about a problem that you identified you had four months ago. Nice, nice. That makes sense. And I, I love it because you're breaking the process down even further. So you're saying, yeah, the, the calls is the the catalyst yeah. in that part of the process. But then you're also going to break it down. How many calls lead into uh, them staying on the phone for longer? How many calls lead into uh, maybe they set another appointment later? How many calls lead into actually closing the deal? So you're breaking each segment down so that the, the salesperson, you can identify the weakness of the salesperson and yes. either help them to rectify it yes. or realize if we need yep. to get someone else. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then also, too, look, I'll break it down even further. You get the call connect. You're actually getting them to set the appointment. Now, the next KPI is how many of these leads are showing up? Because it's the setter's job yes. to actually not only set the appointment. So they commit to Wednesday at one o'clock. Now it's the setter's job to actually get that lead to get to the call. Their actually mm. job is to make sure that they show up. So mm. if their job's not done once the appointment is set. Their job's done when that lead actually shows up on the Zoom or the phone call to actually go through the sales process. Mm. So now let's say we got more KPIs to look at. Okay, your outflow is good. Okay, your ability to set appointments is good. But now your show percentage is below 50%. Now mm. I can know, okay, your ability to get them from, hey, I'm committing to this time to the getting them to show up, there's you're, we're lacking somewhere and we can give some improvement and some different nice. strategies on how they can get people to show up to the phone call, right? That, and they want to show up, their job's over as the setter. At, 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 hey, if I'm doing all my metrics, phone calls, getting people to show up, and then the closer ain't closing, it ain't got nothing to do with the setter, right? Now yeah. that's something that we got to address now with the actual person that's on the phone. Um, I like that. Completing I the like setter. that, bro. That, that's the root of continual service improvement, uh, which is best practice in corporate America. All right. So, yeah, yeah. You, you're taking the things that you've done throughout right. your whole career and I'm implementing sure. it. Into but I've been doing program. this, though. That's the thing. I didn't just yeah. wake up yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Since 2006. True like that. since 2000, it's 2022. Yeah. So it's all about what you came back to me and said. He's like, man, focus on on this deal right here. Like focus on the sales. Focus on like, why don't you, you know, but. Mm -hmm. When you're so focused, when you when you're getting a result, right? Again, it's just like we talked about. When you get a, into a comfort zone, and this is entrepreneurship exposed. As entrepreneurs, we get in a comfort zone. We're getting a certain amount of money. We're getting a certain amount of impact, and then we don't want to shift and we don't want to change because we feel like we're good over here. But not only will mm. we be, not only will we be better on over here, but yeah. we would have more impact and we would have more ability to progress if yes. we make that transition. And by making that transition. You know, it's been it's been a game changer, bro. That's definite. I mean, I'll say even the the transition that you made um, with the uh, into acquisitions. That's yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that's another a perfect example because you made the transition transition into acquisitions, learning how to acquire. You don't need to do it, right? Yeah. And doing it, you're doing other things that's making money and whatnot. Oh, we got people popping up in here while I'm on the podcast. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but we didn't make those things happen, right? We just, um, I, I mean, you you decided that, well, I want to learn this new skill. I want to keep going. I want to uh, transition because you see how it relates to what you're currently doing as well. Yeah. And yeah. I think that that is critical. So yeah. as an entrepreneur, we have to do that all the time anyway, for sure. Mm -hmm. right. So now explain the pros of sales we kind of been talking about it already but some that part up for me too yeah the, the pros of sales um is that in life everything's a sale mm -hmm. like i'll just i'll just take it to the generalization of like in life right we sell mm -hmm. our kids on going to bed on time we sell our mm -hmm. kids on not eating candy all day we sell mm -hmm. our spouse on why we want to go over here for vacation instead of over here we sell 
are, you know, um, so let's, that's general, general, right? Everyone's in sales, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're, let me give you, let me even break it down even further. What sales really means. Sales means empowering someone to make a decision. Mm. Empowering someone to make a decision. I like yeah. that. That's interesting. So in sales, you're, and, and when you're a service-based business, right? We're, we're talking about entrepreneurship. Typically you're in service to someone else. You're solving a problem, service-based business, right? You're, you're empowering them to make a decision that's actually good for them because they've identified and raised their hand because by the time the sales process like actually begins, when you get on a sales call or a zoom with someone and you're actually at the point to where you're breaking down your services and their problem, mm -hmm. you have identified that, okay, this person has this problem. I have this service that can solve this problem. Let me shorten the gap. So we both can say, let's get married at the end of this call. Mm -hmm. So you're empowering them to make a sales, you're empowering them to make a decision. So what's the benefit of, of having a sales team and having a process in place to empower more people to make a decision regarding your products and services. It gives mm. you, it's the only way you can grow in a business yeah. is by having a sales process in place and a sales system in place. And if you are the face of your business or you're the CEO of your business or you're the founder of your business, the ideal scenario is it not to be you to sell your products and services. Exactly. That's the exactly. ideal scenario. So the pros is it frees up your time yeah. right? and it gives you the ability to keep being a visionary in your business. Right. Yeah. You're working on your business and not in your business. Now, mm -hmm. there's two different and I don't want to because that's a whole nother topic in itself. Yeah. But the pros of it is it gives you the ability to scale and it gives you the ability to empower other people to make money within your business. Because if you got let's just say two, you got two sales guys that are are making, you know, six figures. Now they have a whole life that they can now fulfill. They have the ability to now give their their life. Uh, a different upgrade. They have the ability to now drive certain vehicles and live in certain neighborhoods and 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 go on vacations and have some type of freedom of of you know in this world that quote unquote we're in a recession. Now you're empowering mm -hmm. other people to make money. So it, it just from the salesperson all the way to the founder CEO of the business. There's pros all the way through that when it, when it's going well when everybody's clicking on on all accords. Mm, I love it. I love it, man. So, so lastly, the opportunities, why you should really focus on sale right now, why you should build a sales team, that certain things that may be happening that's going to, uh, you know, explode if you get into it now. Maybe there's new systems coming out that's going to really help your sales process. Anything like that, opportunities that yeah, we should be taking I, I, advantage. I'll give two opportunities to two different avatars. Okay. The first avatar is I'm going to talk to the business owner on here, the, the entrepreneur, the one that actually has a business that needs to generate sales. Mm -hmm. The opportunity right now is that we're going into, quote unquote, a recession. We're going into where people are going to be tighter with their money. We're going into a place where people want to retract, right? Retraction. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're relying on auto purchases, if you're relying on your content to generate your sales, if you're relying on your webinars to generate your sales, if you're relying on anything outside of a real human being that's going to talk to this other human being, mm. you will lose in 2023 and beyond. So the opportunity is you need to get out of the automation when it mm. comes to sales. Only automation is having a real human being that's picking up the phone, that's calling people to talk about your products and services. The, the opportunity is to get your mindset out of like automating your business and focus on getting real live people that are skilled, that are motivated, that are hungry, that believe in your products and services, that believe in you, that believe in your mm -hmm. brand, that believe in your business. That's going to wake up every day to grow and scale your business by customer acquisition. That's the opportunity mm -hmm. for the business owner and entrepreneur. The second opportunity is for the guy that's working right now at a job that you don't like, you're underpaid, you're undervalued, and you need to learn a new skill set. You need mm -hmm. to learn the skill set of high ticket sales. You need to learn the skill set of how to empower someone to make a decision on a product and service that they've identified that they have a problem that needs to be solved. And the reason why is because you got all these entrepreneurs in the space that are going to need sales reps, that are going to pay you handsomely 10%, 15%, 20% of everything you sell. If I have a $10,000 offer and I and my monthly goal is a million dollars a month, mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to have to pay a salesperson 
10 to 20% commission for those sales. So the, guess what? One person is not going to knock down a million. I'm probably going to need four or five people to do that. But that mm -hmm. means that they're doing 200,000 to $300,000 a month in sales. 10% of that is 30K in commissions. 20% of that is 50K a month in commissions. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make more money, you need to learn. Right now is the opportunity to learn a high ticket skill set of, of learning how to sell, sell um, in yeah. general. And you'll never be broke and you can write your own checks for the rest of your life. I love it. I love it, man. That's what's up, bro. You, you Listen, you are breaking it down fully and people need to really pay attention to this, right? Because when it comes to that, I've seen it happen too often. Successful entrepreneurs doing well, but they're not focused on the sales team. They just mm -hmm. focus on the marketing. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why there's a delineation between the two. It's sales mm -hmm. and marketing. Right. We do need the marketing. We do need the branding, but we also need to focus on the sales overall. Now, bro, I'd have uh, a challenge because uh, I'm going to wrap it in to the acquisitions side okay. of it right now. I have a challenge coming up. Uh, I already issued it and it started this year and it's going to go for another seven years to the end of this decade. Uh, it's called a trillion dollar table challenge. The trillion dollar table challenge. I want to sit in a room at a table at the end of this decade with folks that look like us for sure. And we have a trillion dollars AUM assets under management. That doesn't mean cash in the pocket. It means that we have assets under management, a portfolio of businesses, a portfolio of, of uh, uh, real estate, a portfolio mm -hmm. of uh, uh, our financial markets, you know, stocks and options and, uh, uh, Forex, will you be at that table? Absolutely. There we go. I I'm waiting for the day that somebody says, nah, I don't think I'm going to be at the table. <laughs> but you, you, you just, you just sold me right now. See, that's, this is sales right now selling. on the idea of what success looks like, what, like what being a part of a team looks like, right? What, mm -hmm. like that. Most people have that need to be a part of something bigger than them. Most people have the ability, want the ability to acquire wealth, right? Mm -hmm. And there, we we generally have a problem achieving it on our own, right? Mm -hmm. So that's right there. You you gave me some features and benefits, and then you posed a question to me, or really you didn't pose the question. You really were like pushing me towards like that table, like, hey, will you be at this table? Because mm -hmm. I just laid out all these benefits, and you're telling me you want to do all these great things. Will you be at this table? My only response can be yes. Can be yes. Well, I'm contradicting everything that I just talked about. Wow, true that. <laughs> See, you, you you doing you doing it without even knowing you're doing it. There you go, because it's a natural part. Natural. Uh, and, and you know, I have to, I have to be honest about that as well yeah. because I don't like sales. And I told you that the first time I met you, I was like, I don't yeah. like, you know, yeah. I don't want to be. Why, a you why you don't like sales? I'm gonna tell you why you don't like sales before you even tell me why you don't like sales. Mm. Because you've had a negative sales experience. You've had multiple negative sales experience and you don't want to identify yourself with the with people that have given you a negative experience. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do sales, bro. Nobody. Nobody wants to do sales. And yeah. it's not because the fact that they don't want the result of what happens in sales. It's because they don't want the, the, um, <laughs> the, the viewpoint that they have about salespeople that they've had a negative experience with. Yep. That's, that's honestly what it boils down to, but it's so ironic to hear you say certain things like, what was the thing you said earlier about if you don't call that person who bought the low yeah. ticket within that's like five minutes? Five minutes? I've literally done bought something and then Grant Cardone's team called me immediately. <laughs> exactly what yeah. you're saying. Like, okay. hey, we see that you got this. You, you want to go to the 10X conference too? We can help you. Like, wait, hold up, what? Yeah. How'd you get my number? <laughs> exactly. And they're going to keep calling you until you block them or tell them that you do. There's undefiably, I don't want anything else from you. If you leave any window open of later or I need to, right. or like down the line, you're on the list, bro. And you will keep getting called until you block them or till you tell them like confidently, I don't want anything, no other services from this company. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and the reason why that this is so important and why companies do this and Grant Cardone is, is very successful at this is because it's not a no, it's just not right now, mm. right? It's just not, the, it's not a no, it's not right now. Yep. So right now might not be the best time for me to buy X, Y, Z, but next week will be. 
But guess what? I'm not going to just wake up one morning and be like, you know what? Let me call Dan back that called me about that 10X conference. But if Dan calls me that Wednesday mm. and I'm ready, I'm going to pick yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I do want to go to the VIP 10X conference. Yeah, go ahead and sign me up for that. Yep. But I would have never originated that call. I would have never mm. called them to say, hey, I want to, I want to do this. Mm. True that. Shout out to Lashana. I see she says selling is serving. True that. I, I, I did not. And to be honest, don't look at it like that so much. But I realized that now nah, I need to. I realized that, yeah, this is something that's important and I have to give it enough attention. I don't want to do it myself, but I need to make sure that the business has, uh, you know, that resource. So, yeah, 100 percent, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. Listen, the first that uh, when it comes to selling, mm -hmm. my focus obviously is on business acquisitions. Yeah. But I'm selling myself. Yes as the buyer of that business. Because a lot of the, I told you I focus on the uh, retirees. They're like, oh, I built this legacy. I want to put it in the right hands of somebody that's going to take it to the next level and I can trust yep. and blah, blah, blah. And I want them to believe that is me, to know that is me. Because if I'm going in, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go all in like my guy Van for sure. So I'm selling myself to be the buyer. Yes. And it's, it's led to 100% great returns because it's like, they're, they, they'll say to me, oh, well, I want him to buy my business. Yep. And they'll tell the broker, no, forget the other offer. Let's let's see what we can get done with him instead, you know? So it, it, in every aspect of your life, you are selling in some way or another. Yeah, yeah, that, that needs to be um, a, a portion of your, of your uh, course of what you teach people because you're going to get people that are going to want to acquire businesses. And if they don't have no, 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 no tact, if they don't understand that it is a sale, like there's a process to like get someone to know, like, and trust you, yeah. then they're going to lose deals to other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's the reality of it. Like that needs to be something that you could, you should, you know, think about putting into your, into your course of mm -hmm. a sales. Like, Hey, what's your sales process? What's your ability to get this pe person to know, like, and trust you mm -hmm. for you to become the person that they want to do business with? It's just outside of numbers. It ain't about just your ability to buy the business. Right. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's deals that you would never get based off of relationships. If you don't know these like a certain relationships or you don't know how to to relate to someone very, very quickly of yep. where they're at to make you them know, like and trust you. And that's there. That's a skill set involved in that. Exactly, bro. Definitely. Definitely. And and I, I in my community, I focus on, hey, I, well, I call it rapport. You're yeah. building the rapport with them by doing these steps yep, that's going to make yep. them want to uh, uh it's going to do two things one make them want you to be the buyer but two is going to yep. make it's going to make you understand what they're really looking for but mm -hmm. until just this moment i didn't think of the fact that yeah that's sales <laughs> i'm yep. selling myself on that so yeah yep. i'm going to emphasize that yep. in the community uh, for sure it, it, it definitely it definitely is sales and and then one more thing that I want to bring light to regarding you know um, the entrepreneurs since this is entrepreneurship exposed, um, salespeople are is a revolving door. Um, you're not going. You, that's I was told, and I've been through this. You got to hire ten to get two. Ooh yes yes. So yes, don't think, that. Yeah, you got to hire ten to get two. So mm. you have to consistently have your your mindset and understand that you don't want to give people too long of a leash. If someone's failing, mm. the longer you let them fail, it's your fault, mm. right? It's mm -hmm. okay. But the reason why most people that have a sales team that's failing, they let them fail is because they have no desire or or they don't have the skill set to consistently replace salespeople. Mm. They don't want to consistently repeatedly train somebody new. They don't want to have to repeatedly go out there and do the interviews and, and, and get people in and have to recycle through information again. Ooh. So it's laziness and then skill set and then lack of knowledge. So you let failing salespeople ruin your business. You let failing salespeople affect your ability to enroll people into your programs. And I, I've witnessed it for one. And I see it every single day when we're talking to business owners about where they're at within their business. Right. And a lot well, of the I'm about to take offense because you you're talking directly to me right now. <laughs> but like I said, and that's why you push me so so much to do this, because every time we've had a conversation about sales, I can go deep into it. Not because mm -hmm. I learned this out of a book or a course, because I've been doing this since 2006 at a high level. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I've had thousands of sales reps underneath me. 
I've had I've been responsible for eight to nine figures worth of production on an annually basis when I was in the health and fitness field. Right. Yeah. Like, bro, it, it it's so it goes so deep to where it's like if from eight o'clock to twelve o'clock numbers don't look good. We're having emergency meetings for the whole company, company wide, Ooh. based off of numbers from eight in the morning till twelve. So like, there's, there's something called big data, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's what you're doing. I'm talking about large Fortune 100 companies yeah. are doing this. Big data. It, it, it's, the, for example, Starbucks can immediately know that in the Northeast, the sales of Pumpkin spice lattes have dropped by 20% today and something is going on and then they can extrapolate that information to, to make yeah. certain decisions mm -hmm. on the fly to yep. improve sales on the fly. Yep. And you're doing that from the sales team perspective to say, listen, we got to look at every aspect of your day so that we can make good decisions. Yes. I was on a, oh man, who was it? I can't recall who it was I was talking to and I was on a call and they were saying something about how to, oh no, you know what? It was with a seller. As a, as a business that we're acquiring, and this guy is like 78 years old and sharp. And he was like, man, I'm just tired. I just need to retire. I need to get yeah. out of it. But one of the most, I asked him, what is some of the things that you can see improved in your business? And he said something along the lines of um, getting rid of people quicker. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? And then the way he explained it is that, you know, he had a manager who would, was so nice that they would see somebody not performing well in 30 days and they'll be like well we could work on it and help them to get there no if you, you will know in 30 days if that person is not a good performer and you need to make better decisions and cut yeah. the ties when necessary so you're, you're talking about that with the the big data approach mm -hmm. and all around sales and i love that yeah. man yeah and 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 like it's it's a revolving door so again most entrepreneurs they don't want to handle it they don't know how to really know how to handle it. And, and it's a bottleneck in their business. So definitely um, focusing on that and putting experts in place that can handle that portion of their business mm -hmm. will, will definitely help them. And, and, and they'll see tremendous results um, from implementing professional sales teams and having data and metrics and, and um, you know, being able to follow through re regarding that. There we go, bro. So I usually end these calls, these, these sessions, these episodes by asking if the person is going to acquire a business, when they're going to start acquiring business. I don't got to ask you that no more. I've been on, I've been on top of you for a minute with that. I've been yeah. like, yo, bang, when you going to acquire a business? Yeah. So now I like to congratulate my brother to say that he is on his way in the middle of, of an acquisition and many, yeah. many, many more to come, bro. So yeah, that's going to be one way that I'll definitely see you at the trillion dollar table, man. Acquiring Absolutely. more and more businesses. And I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn it around back on you. I'm. A, you know me, man. I'm Mr. Go All In. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm gonna make you uncomfortable on your own uh, thing. Yeah. When are you gonna get your sales team together, man? What's up? When, when no, you no, 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 no. You can't make me uncomfortable on that because I've been asking you for that. Remember, <laughs> I said to you. You remember, I said to you last year in 2021. I was like, I mean, hey, I'm we mean, hey, sales. Okay. Matter of fact, we, it was because we were go, we were gonna do something. The 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 that that mastermind together yep. and then you was like i put the sales team together i was like no yep. damn cool you you got the whole same thing how you gonna do it and i started asking those questions i was like yo you should focus on only on sales bro and i would use your service too and all that all yeah. of that so i got listen, you all right we're gonna, we're, 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 gonna I need a, it. we're gonna have a conversation offline because you 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 got content you got all the social proof in the world man and i know for me anybody that that sells your program is going to believe in it and that's the main thing let me give you just one more piece of data real, real quick the, the, the salesperson has to get indoctrinated in your offer, has to get indoctrinated into your community, has to get indoctrinated into your case studies and your results mm -hmm. because they have to believe in what they're selling. Yeah. They have to, bro. They can't, it can't just be a random sales dude that just is looking to get money in his pocket. Mm -hmm. They have to believe. And we have a certain system that we do to make sure that they believe in what they're selling and that they can, they can confidently talk about your program as if they were in your program. And that's that's very, very important. So that's my last piece right there when it comes to finding a salesperson. We've got to indoctrinate them that's in your, your services. And well, you my brother, I appreciate you, man. You did, you gave some great gems. This is, this is important stuff that I think people just overlook way too much, bro. So I thank you for coming on to Entrepreneurship Exposed. Thank you for dropping these gems. And what I want is for you to uh, 
uh, tell people how they can get in touch with you, how to tap in with you going forward if they if they want to get a sales team as well. Yeah, yeah. So you can go to my website, closeragencyllc.com backslash apply now. Closer Agency LLC. Oh, LLC.com yep. backslash apply now. Apply we'll make now. sure that we put that in the uh, um, uh, description below so everybody can tap in with you, bro. Yep. Um, thank you again for being on Entrepreneurship Exposed, man. And I'm looking forward for our next conversation because we got so much more that we need to be talking about, bro. So, and, and you know, since we started together on the, uh, yep. the, the podcast journey, yep. you know, we got to make sure that we keep tapping in with each other and yeah, growing. Definitely. Well. definitely. Yep. I got some some fun stuff coming up for 2023. Um, so we definitely got to tap in and I'm full fledged in this acquisition mindset. So yeah, we, we got, we're gonna have some good stuff to talk about. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, everybody. Well, that's been another great episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed where we exposed seven figure sales and having your sales team and why you need it. Make sure you're like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you are following us on all streaming platforms for your, for podcasts so that you don't miss information like this. I'll see you on the next episode.